Welcome to the Spiritual Unity Radio Network, a station dedicated to the concept that all manifestations of the divine are equally valid. Join Reverend Terry Power HP, Robin McKean, and all the hosts for programming covering a wide range of spiritual topics right here on Blog Talk Radio. A safe place where we have the freedom to think about life without judgment. We take a look at society, we examine it, and we allow for the possibility of something new, something different. And now, here's your host, Alan Ritter. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining me on this edition of An Emerging Forest. This is the episode from September 8, 2019. We are live. If you want to talk to my guests, uh, Diana and Fred Kluth, please uh, call 646 564 9714. Once again, that's 646 564 9714. And I would just like to begin the program like we always should by bringing out our guests, and our guests are on. Uh, Welcome. Welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you, Alan. Thank you very much for having us here. Yeah, it's very exciting. So, Diana, uh, I would like you to give a really short overview of what you offer and your contact information, sort of in the uh, two- to three-minute uh, time limit, so people can get a flavor for what you offer and then we'll talk about uh, your your path, Fred's path, and then your path together. Sure. Thank you for the opportunity to speak about this. Um, I have a private practice where I do one-on-one counseling work, uh, usually via Zoom. Um, or in person, and I also do uh, sessions um, sometimes in your own home. And uh, in addition to uh, that kind of one-on-one therapy work, deepening, using various healing modalities, um, I also offer uh, group experiences, workshops, um, and I've got some sort of different offerings uh, coming down the pipeline as well that um, really all of these are rooted in centering in authentic soul self and shedding the false matrix, matrix constructs to allow joy to flourish and deepen relationships and community to be able to caretake ourselves, our families, our communities, and ultimately the earth to become better gardeners of this planet and caretakers, caregivers. Oh, and uh, And, uh, the place where you can find out more about my work and contact me or schedule services is dianahealing.com d-h-y-a-n-a h-e 
a l i n g dot com, and also through the um, event page on Facebook. There's a, a link to learn a bit more about some of the. Uh, we put together a little page document with everything that's coming down the the uh, on the calendar uh, scheduled for the next few months. And are there any highlights that you want to point to as far as things that you have offered coming uh, coming in the October November time frame? Yes, thank you. And even uh, in September, right now, uh, for my private one-on-one sessions, I have a um, a couple offerings. One is opening to the community and referrals. Um, a a very accessible rate for those who are seeking support in um, deconstructing uh, these these obstacles and um, that have been uh, imposed upon us by the dominant culture and uh, also right now a back to school promo for those encouraging those um, to return to nourish yourself um, to continue deepening and and put aside any shame or judgment about seeking support with anything Um, so there's a a a a discount for my services Um, and you can see that on my website and then in um, uh, September, starting September 29th at 3.30, we're beginning another Womb Awakening book study, uh, which we'll be doing monthly. And um, then Joy Spring, beginning in January, is going to be a community offering for uh, one is for families and one is for women to dance and Sing and create art in um, in a way that allows us to really deepen and find our authentic self and center and self-express from that place, really to liberate ourselves in community. So Joy Springs is uh, online or it's in person or how does that work? That one is in person. It's a group uh, gathering that is going to be happening uh, for families first Friday starting January 3rd uh, from 7 to 8.30 in Bloomfield, New Jersey at the Afro-Brazilian Cultural Arts Center of New Jersey, Cultural Center of New Jersey. And um, for women, it will be Saturdays, for uh, second Saturdays beginning uh, January, oh, I don't have that right in front of me, um, the 11th, perhaps, uh, from 1.30 to 3, or 1 to, yes, something like that. I'll, I'll look it up and and bring it back up. Okay. Uh, could you give your website one more time, please? Thank you. Yes. DianaHealing.com. D H Y A N A H E A L I N G dot com. And there'll be a link in the footer of that site to our umbrella site, Spanda Center, Spanda Center Sanctuary. Nice. So I I think we'll start with with you, Diana, um, what is your, uh, how did you get to be, uh, offering these things? Where did, where did, where did your road take a left turn or, uh, um, something like that? Which lifetime? <laughs> um, <laughs> Seriously, it's been um, a lifelong journey, you know, in the alchemy of uh, both my parents, uh, both very passionate, both very 
wise, one very scientifically rooted, the other very cosmically uh, attuned. And then in the alchemy of that mystery and following uh, the unraveling of that relationship and my place in the constellation of my family and growing up steeped in this mecca of creativity in New York City and, um, uh, you know, global influences I, through, through both exposure to many, uh, you know, arts and, and resources and then also through exposure to, to trauma and uh, I journeyed with all of that throughout my upbringing and young adulthood, um, always seeking, always questioning, always connecting the dots. And then there was a, a pivotal experience that really catapulted me into this trajectory that uh, I knew I could not turn back from this call to ministry that I had survived to serve life in some way and to be of service. Um, and so continually questioning from the get go from that moment, how and what do I need to shed to be able to be of service in whatever way that I'm being called to be. Um, so that, yeah, from there, I just continued learning, um, and, uh, sort of saying yes to things, um, that I encountered at crossroads as I walked this path and, um, integrating and, and letting go of what did not serve love and, um, and in, and I was going to say also um, working with my own personal journey of healing and um, bumping up against the 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 mainstream dominant dominating culture that told me how I need to be should um, be and how that friction there was friction in what didn't feel right and really continually coming to my center to discern what my soul and heart and, and, and uh, where my feet needed to take me. So yeah, it's a, a very, a much longer story in detail, but that's pretty much hopefully captures it for you. So who um sort of what uh teachers books uh et cetera or or not so much influenced uh sort of how how do you go about things in your in your healing practice what um what do, so do I'll you, give you, do an you example. talk to people I'll give you an example of of how I found myself on on this uh, trajectory from from about um, oh fifteen no it would be about twenty years ago I and and this is the way I still still operate and and um. And kind of promote that seeking, rooting into yourself and, and just one foot in front of the other and looking at the signs in nature and the universe and synchronicity to know um, who, you know, who are your teachers. So I, I at the time I was living in Jersey City um, and right before I met Fred, um, I would go to this book sale at the church around the corner and 
they hadn't even put up all the books yet that, that were in this box that someone dropped off. And I was looking through it, and I basically took the whole box. <laughs> I bought the whole box. It had all kinds of very interesting books on Vedic astrology. Um, uh, and in it was a book called Shaman Healer Sage by Dr. Alberto Violdo. I read the book. I had been reading about, you know, uh, alchemy, and and I think at the time I was also in a group um, support group for people recovering from from uh, the trauma that I had been through of of being shot and and having someone die. Um, and I, in it was it was one of those miraculous, you know, con convergences, intersections of synchronicity where I finish reading the book. I'm I'm really wowed by this this piece in the book that, that talks about healing your ancestors and your lineage and healing the constellation um, of people around you, your family, by healing yourself. And um that week at the Open Center in New York, which was down on Spring Street at the time, Alberto Vilda was going to be speaking. I went. I met a very dear friend who um, right there was sitting next to me, um, who I, I, I met her there, who's still uh, a, a beautiful person that that anchors me in this in this work even though we don't see or speak to each other a lot but she then encouraged me to come to the workshop on the weekend I went to the immersive workshop on that weekend with him and then from there I scheduled a private session with him the next week and so he's not based in New York City and he encouraged me and connected with me uh, connected me with the Helix training program. Now they had a waiting list because they did a four year cycle with one group of students and didn't admit students every year. So in the period of like two or three years that I was on that waiting list, I met Fred. And then from there, we did that training together when when registration opened. And so yeah, and then after that, that hooked me into the sh- the shamanic piece. I really loved um, and resonated with with that work and medicine. And in that program, we um, who was, that was founded by a group of people, um, but also Julie Winter, I think was a big catalyst for that. She's going to be coming out with a a book of her own in in December. Um, and we just were with her at her, her healing circle that she's been doing every week for like 30 years. So she was a big influence and, um, and, and that whole program taught us a lot of Buddhist psychology, um, meditation, mindfulness, meditation practices, hands-on healing work. Um, and then I finished after that. I finished training and was initiated into the the same lineage and teachings that um, Alberto Violdo brought over from his teachers. Um, and then after that, I went on and trained with some others, just the same way, you know, Irma, Star Spirit, Turtle Woman, um, Susana Tapia Leon, um, and now I'm into herbalism, which has been a journey for also the last 15 years, but now I'm actually making the time to take some courses um, and, and learn from, from others um, uh, right now with metal juice herbals. Um, so, yeah, I want to learn everything. <laughs> I know I can't, but there's so many, there's so much medicine, so many lineages, so many, um, so many people who are doing such beautiful work and sharing such important medicine for this planet. Great. Thank you so much. Um, we have a caller. Uh, do you mind if I bring them on? No, not at all. 
Hi, caller. Uh, do you have a question for Diana or Fred? Hi, I'll put you. I'll put you back on listen. So, Fred. What's your, yes, what's your journey? What, what's your journey into this? Well, um, very similar to Deanna, I was always a, a, a like very curious person. Um, I experienced a violent episode when I was about 16, um, and that kind of threw me into a questioning of the universe. I was, um, I was with a young woman when I was like 16, and we were jumped by a young man who proceeded to try to um, basically rape her. And then I tried to defend her and it cracked, I cracked, he cracked my skull in with a rock. And that made me, I was, I survived that by like inches. And that made me think, Oh, you know, put me on a journey of like, why am I here on this planet? And like many other trauma survivors, it, kind of like quickens your your um, questioning of the world and this sent me on a path as well and I went through a lot of self-discovery I was really disillusioned with the world as a young man and started to like question why our society is the way it is where is the meaning of all of it and it made me start to look at like the occult and paranormal and I started to learn like about Wicca and then that sort of didn't really bring me anywhere and I spent a lot of time kind of just suffering through that suffering finding not finding mirrors in the world that allowed to allowed me to really understand how the world works on an instinctual level and um, it wasn't until I met Diana where I started to really find somebody that I felt really got me and really understood the kind of questions I had in the world. And then going to Helix, Diana and I, Diana mentioned that we had taught, that we had learned from Helix and the teachers there. And that was a really great introduction, not only to self analysis, but, you know, starting to help other people and, that journey was a, was an amazing journey of self discovery. And from that, I started to do a lot of men's work. Um, I was a part of a, a, a group of men who met every week for every Monday, sort of tried to teach each other how to be accountable and for our, in our own lives and, you know, make our words valuable. What we say we would do, we would do. And, um, from there, Dion and I started to learn about womb awakening. So Dion, kind of didn't really mention this, but this was a big um, factor in our lives. And it was right after my second child was born. And Dion and I were kind of having a rough time of things. Um, I had gone through three jobs in the time that Charlotte was, uh, Charlotte, our youngest, was in utero. And we were really in a tough place we were really angry with each other and we were really I was very frozen I was like couldn't act I didn't know what was going on I was kind of overwhelmed with the idea of having a child and another child and um, it was soon after that that Dion and I came in touch with um, the womb awakening work with from Azra Bertrand and Saren Bertrand and it it was like kind of like Deanna was like oh we should try this um, our friend Carol Maria told us about this and and it was interesting and it was kind of light where they would do these forty day cycles and it was I say it's light because from the like a lot of the trauma work that, or the recovery work and spiritual work soul recovery work this was kind of like was the daily practices of yoga. Um, and guided meditations and 
the work started to open our hearts up back to each other and soften and it was all based so much in love and the recovery of the sacred feminine and the balance between the sacred feminine and the masculine that we were able to really get back in touch with what we loved about each other and a deeper sense of purpose on this planet. And Diana was full into it. And I was like, Oh, you know, as much as the rhythm of our relationship is Diana often leads and I'm, I follow and then I'm really happy. And then sometimes I lead, um, the work is intense and it's beautiful. And Diana started to do the apprenticeship. They had a nine moon apprenticeship and became the teacher. And, and then I started doing it probably a year afterwards. And I did the teacher training in Hawaii and the the work is so grounded in, in the body because it, the, the understanding is that the area where the when woman's womb is and the man's hara is is a cluster of hundreds and thousands of nerve endings, just like you have in your mind. And it's an information center and you can tap into this energy in your body and really kind of work through a lot of trauma and a lot of um, pain in your life to find a new way. Like I had done somatic work and I had done like Jungian therapy and done a lot of shamanic work and all of them moved me along the path of healing but it wasn't until I started to really do this womb awakening work that it was like a quickening and I don't know whether it was where I was in my life or the change of philosophy I had but it it was something that I actually felt like I was getting healed rather than oh you're a little bit better you're a little bit better you're a little bit better this really helped me turn my life around in lots of ways and that's a lot of what we want to offer to people is a real heart-based, body-based healing and listening, deep listening to help people in this world. Because I don't think that a lot of people get that. And to offer that to someone is a real gift. That's, that's really awesome. I think that now is a really good time for us to take the break at the bottom of the hour. And May I close um, with a quote, a reading from the Womb Awakening book? That's the, the opening passage. Please do. Okay. Please do. Our creator is full of love, and this pure seed blooms within us. And I'll skip down. Paradise is within us. Eden is the mother matrix of our life-coded primordial feminine biology. The great womb that birthed all is pregnant with magical possibilities. We can weave with these infinite creative threads to receive new strands of wisdom. We are still connected by a spiral umbilical cord to the placenta of the void and can draw deep sustenance, nourishment, and support from her cosmic womb. Thank you, Diana. Hey, everyone. We'll be back right after this break. And the song I'm going to play is Dave the Bard's Howl and Co. See you in a few minutes, everyone. Take no scorn to wear the horn. It was the crest when you were born. Your father, father wore it, and your father wore it too. Day or to welcome. 
Tune in to International Pagan Radio. You can hear your favorite artists such as Dave the Bard, Tuatha Dea, Spiral Rhythm, S.J. Tucker, Murphy's Midnight Rounders, and many, many more. Join us for exciting shows like Ask a Witch and Storytime with Rook as well. www.internationalpaganradio.com on the net or on TuneIn Radio on your mobile devices. Join us on Facebook and Twitter too. International Pagan Radio, all pagan, all the time. Welcome back to an emerging forest on the Spiritual Unity Radio Network. We hope everyone was able to stretch their legs and get a drink. And now... Back to Alan. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, would you please continue, Fred, with what you were talking about? Oh, sure. Um, One of the things and that what, and what, one of the, what and what your offering uh, and oh, what sure. your offerings are right. So I also do one-on-one sessions as well as Diana, and you can find both of our contact information at womanhara.org. Um, that's W-O-M-B-A-N-D-H-A-R-A dot org. And I do one-on-one sessions with people healing. I do a lot of focus on trying to with uh, men's work. Um, one of the things that I'm also working with is dragonministries.com. And I do daily, uh, like about a one day and weekend offerings for Dungeons and Dragons, which is a role playing game. I'm sure that many people have heard of. And our take on it, my take on it is that in role playing, you get to take on different personas. And as you are taking on these different personas, it's a way to, learn about yourself and your character and to play with your identity, to use this as a tool of exploration and to have fun doing it. So it's a way to build community and it's an interesting take on, you know, spiritual work because a lot of people think spiritual work can be very heavy and very difficult. And this is taking it and looking at the fun of it. And that's a lot of what Deanna's doing too with her, her joy, her um, joy offerings. So it's, you know, really addressing the fun in life and looking at ways to use fun tools like Dungeons and Dragons to learn about yourself. And we're having a mm. 
My next my next offering is on October 20th in Bloomfield. We're going to have an all-day Dungeons & Dragons session with guided meditations and looking at the hero's journey of um, Joseph Campbell. Yeah, that's nice. Thanks. It's super fun. So, so Deanna, I'd like to pass Ooh. this over to you because uh, Fred introduced the uh, womb and horror work. And mm-hmm. so uh, you didn't really touch on that, uh, and mm-hmm. I would like you to sort of uh, touch on that because I know you have um, – I know that there's, a, there's, the, there's the other book um, – there's the other bookend of the bookshelf that needs to talk about this. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the Masculine and the Feminine – and uh, I, I really fell in love with the womb awakening uh, teachings as they were transmitted and gathered and shared by um, Saren and Azra Bertrand. And uh, although many people are tapping in, it's really a, um, you know, out there in the field of of existence, these uh, archetypes and um, these deities and these frequencies um, that, you know, and these lineages of, of teachings that have been passed down for generations and, and, and they live encoded in our DNA they they live um, in spirit. You know, you just need to extend your antenna and receive the transmission. Um, you know, tune into what spiritual lineages uh, are calling to. You know, if if you believe that, you know, our souls reincarnate and inhabit lifetimes in many different forms, then it makes sense that one would have an affinity to a particular frequency or, you know, be attuned to a certain uh, way of, of, of living uh, and, and, you know, face of God, a way of perceiving and experiencing and walking the path of this embodied life and as well as tuning into your your ancestral physical lineage um so that's what womb womb awakening really opened the horizon of 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 many doors for me that that were already simmering from uh, just the exposure I had to to my mother, and uh, and how she walked in this life, and the training that I had already had. But something happened in in the practices, in experiencing the practices, and 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 doing these you know, 40 day commitments to ritual, which um, can be found in, in various different teachings um, that changed something and opened, you know, it accelerated it. it I, I likened it to depth psychology, but that it was accelerated. And really um, bridging that kind of um, psychological work and marrying it with the kind of uh, molecular altering, you know, uh, work that happens in dream time and and shamanic work um, uh, from. That, that indigenous cultures have, have understood for thousands of years. Um, and so having these experiences 
really one one of them, for example, really connected me with my purpose. Um, in one of these journeys we took, it was a, a, a rebirthing process, not like um, some other teachings. This was really a, a physicalized, um, embodied experience, re, recapitulating my birth. Now, the first time I did this, I couldn't really go there. I was, I was afraid to re-experience that and 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 feel what I might have felt in my mother's womb, um, any of those uh, emotions or, or or yeah, I was not ready, you know. So this is this is the kind of thing we bump up against in in healing work all the time. Something can seem like this this like this scary. Thing that that we avoid until we don't, and we're ready to soften into the experience. And I had this amazing experience, and I really connected in with my soul's purpose. I came into this lifetime, and you know, it came to me. I was like, "What, really?" <laughs> I thought it was going to be something really deep and profound, but it was to have fun, to embody joy to live and and experience and share this i mean this is the time the pivotal time that we're living in we we're no longer you know on the steps thousands of years ago fighting to protect ourselves um survive in survival mode and yes Many are still in survival mode, and there's a lot of work to do on this planet. But we are also, many of us, in a place where we have relative safety and security. So a lot of this fear-based motivation is residual from the information that has been genetically passed down for our survival and we don't need it anymore. We can open up to all these other sensory experiences. Our bodies are designed for to feel ecstasy and pleasure and all these things that were for many years taboo and, and oppressed, you know, our sexual pleasure, our, our sensual enjoyment, you know, um, and and even like breastfeeding is still i mean people sexualize and make it evil and wicked when it's life-giving nurturing you know so all of this came through in in my studies these of of womb awakening and were such a gift to be uh you know, often in the way we're raised, we, we need permission from the outside. <laughs> so in a way, I was given permission again. But really, what it what it is with womb awakening is you drop into your womb, you know from within, or your hara if you're a man, and you give yourself permission. You you it's it, you know a lot of it is a, just another way also of reparenting and all these psychological uh, tools. But there's also really tapping into the divine feminine, the the mother, father, birther, this unconditional loving vibration, this energy, uh, the bringing back the teachings of of the mermaids, the swan priestesses, and 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 Isis uh, priestesses. So much rich, rich, beautiful wisdom that had been lost and and really dormant in our psyche until it was ready, you know, so so that it's safe enough to come back. Like, you know, we went through the period where if you even looked like you were thinking about this, you'd be burned at the stake. You know, and so those memories are, are, are real and embedded in our in our in our physical experience. Um and then re traumatized by how we're perceived then in this lifetime um 
Oh, there's so much. Such a rich tapestry was woven to, you know, come together within this union, the sacred union between uh, Azra and Saren and their whole experience leading up to this that, that catalyzed this birth, the book and their teachings until it was time to let it go, you know, and I honor also how they did that. They were also always asking, well, how can we make this continue to be this feminine teaching? It started to become this, you know, pyramid, you know, a lot of things get monetized and then they just shed it. They dissolved it and, and gave it, you know, cut the umbilical cord to all the people over the years that they had taught and, and initiated into, um, you know, uh, wisdom keepers of the womb. And, you know, now they're gestating their, their next books and, and practices or whatever journey they're on. But really, this was such a gift at such a, a perfect time for, for Fred and me. Wow. That sounds, that sounds so awesome. So it is. You, wanted to, mm-hmm. you wanted to take us on a, on a guided journey Yes, um, just are you ready? Are, re- are you ready? Are are we ready to leave the sure. station yet? <laughs> or or to land in in our station? Um, mm-hmm. Yes, because it's about embodying and coming into ourselves and connecting to the all that is that we are a part of. So, um, yes, if I may, you ready? Sure. Please go ahead. Okay. Okay. So all you listeners out there at this time in, or in the future, I invite you to close your eyes and center yourself with a, a straight spine, an open heart, and deep breath, either sitting or laying down. And just know this is going to be a short little journey, a little tasting of dropping into your womb and tending to your garden. So begin just breathing, allowing your head your neck, your shoulders, just everything, all your bones to be heavy, your chest, your waist, your hips, thighs, knees, ankles, feet, and all the muscles and organs. Your brain, just everything heavy, soften into your breath. Drop the mind down, down, through your heart, down into your womb or your hara. That space between your hip bones below your navel. Allow yourself to place your mind there in this space, this place that is full of a spiraling darkness of primordial life. Swirling, swirling, feeling yourself along the outer perimeter, spiraling slowly, slowly towards the center, faster and faster, allowing yourself to let go, to surrender, 
falling backwards through the center of the spiraling vortex within your womb for Hara. Down, 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 spiraling down, feeling yourself fall and letting go, letting go of all fear or judgment, suspending disbelief, surrendering until you land softly, barefoot on grass, feeling the earth beneath your feet. You look around and see off to your right a door and an overgrown wall of vines. You approach the door and enter into the garden of your womb, Ohara. Stepping in, notice the smell, the sight, the life. And you can come back here and explore more detail another time, just noticing and disregarding for now any weeds and decay that need to be tended to any other plants that might need to be watered. There's so much beautiful life here that you may want to tend to. But for now, seek out the large grandmother oak tree in the center of this vast garden, this landscape. Take note of what you see along the way or hear. Trust that any animals or birds or scents that come your way are messages. And when you get to the tree, take a walk around its huge, massive base until you find the treasure, the gift this tree offers you, this small symbol somewhere along its roots. Open your heart to receive. Find it and pick it up in your hands. Allow it to make itself known to you. What is the gift, the treasure that was waiting for you in your womb or hara? Allow it to sing or whisper its message to you now. What is wanting to be seen in this moment? Hold this close to your heart. 
and allow yourself to be pulled by an umbilical cord, a spiraling thread to a particular spot in your garden that is wanting to be nourishing soil for this treasure that has been gifted to you, that wants to be seen and nurtured and planted in this soil. After you've planted this seed, see that you find the well nearby. Draw some water from the well in your garden. And with a prayerful intention, finish the planting by nourishing the soil bed with the water. Mirroring the intention and prayer that this gift sang to you. You sing it back to it. As you finish ceremoniously planting this in your garden, this treasure that has made itself known to you, that was waiting within all along for the perfect time to be heard, to grow roots. Know that you can come back here anytime to continue to nourish and watch this seed gift grow. Know that it takes root within you and that it is connected to the all of, the, of life that is that it will continue to grow from within you out into the world. Give thanks to this treasure. Give thanks to Grandmother Oak. Acknowledging the rest of your garden. Promising you'll return to care for her. And find your way back the way you came. Through your garden through the door, feeling the grass beneath your bare feet, you jump up and spiral, spiral back up, 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 back into your womb and horror space in your body, spiraling, spiraling, back into your body, back in this space and time, feeling the seat or bed the ground beneath your body. Take a deep breath, wiggling your fingers and toes, rubbing your hands together, and reach out and receive this gift again and place it in your heart or head or womb, anywhere on your body you feel to place your hands. Anchoring in the physical. The gift you received in this dream time realm. 
of primordial infinite possibilities, the garden within that connects to all that earth. And open your eyes. Drink some water. You may make some notes. Watch your dreams. And watch this gift unfold within you. Look for the synchronicities in the world around you. Thank you for taking this journey with me. Thank you for offering. So, Diana, would you please... Uh, summarize uh, your offering again and um, sort of like you did at the beginning and then give your contact information um, that would be that would be good yes thank you so I have a few things going on on my website, dianahealing.com, D-H-Y-A-N-A-H-E-A-L-I-N-G. I have a page called Sharing the Medicine where I have been Uh, making posts and recordings and um, sharing some of the teachings I've learned and practices a couple times a month. So you can find that there. It's um, an ongoing offering, just... Law, or just open up your browser and 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 listen and read. And um, some of them are are guided journeys. Some of them are just talks. Um, and I am also offering a new in-person group uh, class for families and one for women. It's more of a community. Uh, dance, liberatory dance, joyful experience than a class, very minimal uh, guidance, some uh, some optional voice and movement practices. Um, this is called Joy Spring. We're doing, I'm doing that um, beginning January 2020. And uh, it'll be here in Bloomfield, New Jersey. You can find that as well um, at on the list um, linked from the event page, and um, it'll be up on my website as well. And then in um, so there'll be one for families and one for women, a monthly thing. Um, and then spandacenter.org um, will be listing all of these events. Um, and if you want to keep in touch, uh, we're on, on Facebook as well. Um, in the spring, we're doing Pathways to Sustain Joyful Liberation, which is a family retreat uh, curated unconference, a community uh, creation where we'll come together and share ways our families are sustaining joy in our lives and come together to learn how to tend to the earth, how to uh, feed ourselves from the earth, how to forage, um, dance, um, play, 
parents and children will be signing up to offer their weavings for the community. Um, so that's going to be a lot of fun and beautiful, um, uh, a space that really centers for around black and indigenous people of color and their friends, their family who are supporting or interested or immersed in the journey of uh, self-directed learning and returning to indigenous roots and trusting that inner knowing, um, otherwise known as unschooling, de-schooling, separating ourselves from the dominant matrix. Um, so that'll be a really wonderful play space for that. And um, then we're starting our Womb Awakening Book Club September 29th with, uh, together, Fred and myself will be doing that online from the comfort of your own home, uh, diving into this beautiful tome of a book that is so rich with so much information and we'll be doing some practices together and sharing, you know, following the book from beginning to end and on a monthly basis and also maybe just opening it up oracularly to see what messages are wanting to come through. Um, so, and I'm also available for one-on-one -on -one sessions. I've got a couple current promotions going on and you can see that on my website at Diana healing.org slash services. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to share this with you and really root more into this earth and connect with spirit and loosen up and open up those spaces for joy to come into our lives to allow us to be more present with ourselves, 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 and each other in relationship and uh, community and for the earth. And also Fred and I are available for uh, coaching and counseling for, for partners, couples, parents. Um, and we can certainly share how we've moved through these dissonant spaces and, uh, challenges um, that really are a construct of the uh, being brought up in a way that is not natural. So as we've returned to our nature and embraced all the parts of ourselves, you know, this is liberation work for, for everyone. We all need this. Um, yeah. I have, have chills thinking about it um, because it's really, really important, especially for, for the black and indigenous people of color and, and the, the people who, who have suffered from colonization um, more recently and, and are closer to their indigenous roots. It's, it's a very real um, sore, open sore and wound that is so recent. People think it's so far in the past, but it is so recent. Um, and being from this, uh, pretty much raised in this country, uh, America, it's, it's particularly profound um, and beautiful what is going on in, in the evolution of, of this work to really heal from that uh, terrible oppression and genocide. Um, but even if we were many generations removed for, from our indigenous roots and ancestors, we all have them within us. Um, many of us who, who may identify with um, uh, the so-called white race that would be, who are of European descent have so many treasures in their lineage, in our lineage. I have some ancestry from, from the Celtic lineage. 
so many indigenous treasures and and in that in those cultures to to really be able to source and tap into within and just trusting as you shed those layers of conditioning um, and the illusion <laughs> of how we're supposed to live in this world. Really, this current uh, economic system and, and corporate system is, is really recent in the history of our time on this planet as, as humans. So thank you for letting me share all that. And if it resonates, we would love to connect and dance in joy with you and share that and spread that out into the world. Nice. Oh, any, any words, Fred? Well, I'm very thankful that we're here and we're able to, tell our story and, and share who we are to people. Um, it's been a real ple- pleasure to be on this show with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you, everyone, for listening live. And thank you, everyone, who will listen and connect and uh, reach out to uh, Diana and Fred. And um, this is, a, I mean, all we're doing is saying we want to connect, we want to network, we want to grow a community. Um, and so this is how you start. You basically start by saying, well, this is, how I think, the direction that I want to go in, and I want to... Uh, create an emerging forest. So that's why this show is called An Emerging Forest because that's what we're doing here. Thank you again, everyone. My name is Alan Ritter. I'm the host of An Emerging Forest. I run a small produce club in the Philadelphia area. I actually live in southern New Jersey. And if you're interested in that, or if you're interested in being on this program, I can be contacted at ritter.allen88 at gmail.com, R-I-T-T-E-R period A-L-A-N 88 at gmail.com. Once again, my uh, honored guests, the guests that I'm honored to, uh, to have on the show, is Gianna and Fred Kluth. Thank you so much, both of you, so much for being on the show. Thank you, you, Alan. Alan. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone, and I'll talk to you next week. Good night. Good night. Thanks for listening to the Spiritual Unity Radio Network. Join us seven nights a week for exciting programming covering a variety of expressions of faith. And remember, all manifestations of the divine are equally valid.